My name, as most of you know, is Bree Hall. And in most stories, you like to see the rebel be the villain, but not in this story. In this story, the girl with the overactive imagination who's a little bit rebellious is the hero. And I'm gonna make my story come to life for you guys today. But my story doesn't start here in 2016. That's way too current. We have to go all the way back to truly understand it. This is a story about success and overcoming battles. But this is not a story about being normal or following all of the rules. I am fearlessly beautiful and doing everything wrong or against what I was told is the reason why I am successful. To put together all of the random puzzle pieces of my life, we have to start in 1994. And that right there, guys, is me. Wait, wait, um, hold on, wait a second. I think we're in the wrong room. No, I think this is me. Well, we'll be in about 45 minutes after my mom gives birth. And I couldn't even be normal from birth. Most people get headphone cords tangled in their pockets, but me, on the other hand, got tangled in my own umbilical cord. <laughs> How clumsy is that? And before I even entered the world. Thankfully though, the doctors were able to do an emergency C and I was born on May 23rd. All right, let's give them some privacy. So on that day, Brie was born to her Jamaican mom in the Big Apple. The first time I ever drew something noteworthy, which was honestly just stick figures, was age two on an envelope in my grandparents' house. And from that point on, I realized that art was my first love. Everybody now even asks where I learned to draw like that. Honestly, I don't know. I think it's just a gift, but also a curse because all I think in is pictures. Things were going really well in New York. I had friends, I was in a Montessori school, everything was going well, and then due to some unforeseen circumstances, we had to pick up and move to Maryland. I was honestly so sad. I didn't even know where Maryland was on the map. I had to say deuces to the Big Apple and hello to the nation's capital. I knew I was really different at a young age. I couldn't put my finger on it, but it didn't really start to show until I started school. In grade school, I never quite fit in. I went to four elementary schools, so I had to learn how to stand out, and often that was by making people laugh. I made a lot of quick friendships, but never quite fit in just one place. Some people had sports clubs or things that they were just really dedicated to. I wanted to be good at absolutely everything. Sports, computers, crocheting, art and drawing, music, just everything. And I wasn't the cheerleader type. Well, actually, I did that too for about a month. Then they asked me to fake smile more, and I said, nah, not for me. I also wanted to be the dancing baller who did martial arts. In contrast to that chapter, I got to see a new millennium, which many don't get to see, and I even witnessed the birth of technology. Do you guys remember floppy disks and PlayStation 1s? Yeah, that was a big part of my childhood. When I was in kindergarten, I used to get so bored. Like how much more coloring can a girl do? So in my free time, I was a nerd and I used to do long division and stuff like that. And one day I showed my teacher and she was like, oh my gosh, you should not be here. In all actuality, it's just because my mom was a teacher, so I just paid attention to a lot of the stuff that her sixth graders did. They found out that I was reading and writing at a second grade level, so my teacher wanted me to skip two grades, but I decided to stay in kindergarten and just learn and be with my age group. But just as I was getting settled yet again, I went to a totally different elementary school for a year. I made a lot of friends again, but then the county decided to change zoning so school buses couldn't pick me up anymore, so I had to change elementary schools again. My new elementary school was actually the home for Air Force kids, so a lot of my friends' parents were in the Air Force and flew planes, which I think is pretty cool, and I stayed there until sixth grade. And in 2006, I decided to finally audition for a performing arts school. I never had any classes or formal training, and I was really raw and unrefined, but somehow I was one of the two people that made it in that year. Around this time, I was really insecure. I had braces. I was really nerdy, but I somehow managed to get into the advanced art class and skip a few classes. 
and I was one of the few girls. I was so passionate, I had to go to a performing arts high school, but due to transportation and having to take two buses and a train, my mom was like, no way, that's too much for a ninth grader to be doing, so I settled for a magnet science program in my county. In high school, since I was doing something I wasn't that passionate about, I had to find outlets elsewhere. I became a waitress, I later got a job at the government, I had my first real relationship, and this Facebook art contest I started. So I was making money, my grades were great, and it was just a good time. The one downside is in my high school I saw a lot of violence, but despite all the setbacks I was able to graduate in the top 3% of my class. It seemed like I was doing everything right, right? In this chapter, I made breaking rules and being a little rebellious work for me, but it came at a cost. My mom didn't really want my face on the internet, so all my drawing videos were just my hands. Feeling rebellious one day, I decided to start a YouTube channel where I actually put my face online and it all changed from there. However, freshman year, I really hated my major and my grades didn't come out exactly how I wanted them to. Then to top that off, sophomore year, money was dried up and I had to get some jobs. I ended up working five jobs. I was a map drafter in the art department. I worked at three campus offices as a secretary. I was a retail manager at a clothing store and I was a volunteer lunch buddy on the side. I didn't want to live like this anymore, so at one of my jobs, I actually applied for a new job at my school that provided a scholarship. Sophomore year, I made the dean's list, and I thought everything was looking up. I quit all my jobs, and I was so ready to conquer junior year. First semester went really great, then second semester, everything changed after numerous deaths in the family, deaths of friends, and a sexual assault that just turned my world completely upside down. I didn't know who I was anymore, and I had to rediscover that. My world just felt so dark, so yet again, I turned to YouTube, and I created the Fearlessly Beautiful movement for you guys, and for myself. The movement means being fearlessly yourself despite any naysayers or anyone who might tell you differently, because I was told that switching my major to art meant I would not be successful, and even by some that I would never attend the university I went to, and that drawing was just a hobby, and so was YouTube. Fast forward to 2016, which is my current chapter, they were all wrong. Everyone that said anything about anything that I couldn't do, they were all proven wrong. And I want to thank you guys for watching because YouTube has changed my life. Now I'm finally graduating and hundreds of thousands of people tune in just to watch me be myself, which is such an honor. And I want to thank you guys for being such an instrumental part of my story. And I can't wait to see what the new chapters hold. You can do anything you put your mind to. And just be fearless and be beautiful. The end. Well, at least for now. I've got a lot more work to do. And I can't wait to see where this story leads.